Hey folks, it's Lindsey Hudson with SPS back in the building. Couldn't be at a better place. A homecoming for me, proud Detroit. But these guys at Sexton High School with Coach Janelle Davis and company, these are my guys. Started the SPS story a long time ago. This young man and others welcomed me. So I'm so happy to be coming to talk about not just what you're going to be doing with the program this season. You got a big game, game coming up Friday, the 27th against Crosstown Rival Everett. Uh, but tell me what's going on out here, Coach. No, just trying to do our best to get prepared for the season yeah. and uh, get ourselves ready to go. Uh, yeah. Most importantly, you know, we got a big game coming up, which is a cross-town rivalry. Sure, sure, so, sure. So, you know, everybody in the city is all motivated to see what we're going to do this I year. Know. We don't, you know, both teams don't have a year off, so uh, I think we both going to be a little rusty, but it's going to be interesting to yeah. get back out there and get at each other yeah. a little bit. Coach, I couldn't help you. were strategically located. I see you got your guys spread out over the great field, and I see you open here, so you can kind of get a broader view of everything that's going on, like that all C and I you're always watching. Yes. Oh, got, definitely. Got to make sure I'm paying attention to what's going on in every station, you know, make sure we're getting the details taken care of. The guys are staying focused on the really small things. And, uh, you know, for me, that helps me, you know, feel better about myself when I go sure. home at night, making sure, sure everything is tight. You see everything. The group. Yeah. And you also empower the coaches to do what you got to do. You got big JC Jody Clemens out here, a great coaching staff. I, and I remember from our great experience years ago getting started with you guys, you were always kind of like the, the players coach. You had that connection with the players. What is it like your ascension to being the head coach and having that experience but still having being responsible for the whole program? You know, back in, you know, when Bogan was the head coach, you know, and Shout I had to take more, Dan Bogan. Dan Bogan, uh -huh. I had to take more of a, you know, back seat to, you know, the head coaching things. But now when you're in the head coach position, a lot of guys ask me, you know, what's the difference is? I guess I can, best example I can give you is now you're driving the car, you can crash it. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm sure, saying? Sure. Or you, or but, you can cross the finish line too. But, but you can cross the finish line also, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying being the head coach, being able to call the shots and mm -hmm. be able to do things the way I like to do them. Sure. Um, necessarily for the Big Red program as far as, you know, just preparing us. Um, and I live by the six Ps, you know, proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, it's just been a, a great transition to being the head coach because I've been around this program mm -hmm. for about 17 years. I was already in the role of doing some head coach right. things. So it was kind of an easy transition for me. The boys, you know, are already close to them. They took to me. Mm -hmm. So it made it an easier transition for me. Yeah, you know, and I want to compliment you guys. It was easy to observe you guys represented two alpha type males. I mean, clearly, uh, Coach Bogan being a great leader, uh, you always had those qualities. But I always noticed that, and many times you see a difference. But you guys, it was kind of like here. But the, the respect you provided and the respect he provided you, I think it was unlike what you normally see. And it was an ongoing thing. Is it fair to say that? Oh, it was. Uh, it was really a beautiful situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can you work with a, a man um, and never really have any issues? We worked well together. You know, I, you know, I've taught and told people before. You got to be a great sergeant before you can be the general yeah. you know what I mean sure. so I understood my role you mm -hmm. know and it was just to do the best job I could as an assistant coach mm -hmm. making sure that I follow the, the lead of the head coach but also doing everything that this program expected us to yeah. do I, from an assistant point standpoint I think people it's nothing wrong with being ambitious ambition is what got us here but I think people get too overly ambitious in situations I mean I can only imagine how many times people try to put a battery in your back oh man you should be etc but you were able to maintain your demeanor and I just say that because of the conversations the endless talks that we had that you were I guess a head coach in waiting but you were just so good and comfortable in your role and I just couldn't help but emphasize that part well at that time it was it was nothing more important than the youth in this program mm, so yes, right. I never I never you know got ahead of myself mm -hmm. you know I knew that it was you know just about grinding continuing to put in the work for what this program needed and I was developing young men mm -hmm. so I hung my hat on that every single day mm -hmm. and at the end of the day I let God take care of the rest of it yeah you did you know I was involved in my purpose and I was immense in it whether I was the head coach or not I knew I could make a difference in these yeah. children's lives so I just kept on focusing there yeah uh, it was easy to see you on social media man I mean you you was doing a world tour man you, you stayed down in the south taking a young man down there talk about uh, with having the leadership role for Sexton what you did this summer you were a sound body sound mind I saw you with all the head coaches from the state I mean you were still just working man what was that like for you oh man it was it was a superb blessing man mm -hmm. I'm so grateful honored and humbled to be able to travel the world and do what I love mm -hmm. um, we were taking we were mentoring children all over Detroit mm -hmm. Grand Rapids um, I, you know I, I associate myself with sound mind sound body yep. I'm Curtis. able to yep mm -hmm. Curtis Blackwell mm -hmm. who's a fine man runs a great program mm -hmm. down in Detroit I'm also able to get with um, Reggie Wynn over at Rising Stars sure, in which sure. I work camps over there also so sure. I'm touching a whole other part of Detroit with those guys mm -hmm. um, I even do some stuff with 7 on 7 with Legacy Program mm -hmm. shout out to them guys also mm -hmm. as well 
well. Um, so I'm blessed to be able to touch in every avenue, every atmosphere with so many different kids mm -hmm. and make an impact in their lives. I mean, we've traveled to Miami. We've been to Texas. Uh, man, we've been to Indiana. We've been fortunate enough to win some tournaments mm -hmm. and have some really good success out there. But most importantly, it was about getting my youth out of the city a little bit sure. and getting them some exposure in some other areas. Sure. But um, also, you know, hoping that when we get that exposure, we can land some scholarships out there. Yeah. That's what it's really yeah, about. True. Coach, I know you're a humble guy, and I know you pretty much said it when you said it's about putting the youth first when you talked about your relationship as an assistant coach. But your grind, even as a head coach, was so humble, and it seemed like ego was totally out of it. And I just want to just touch on that for a second because if anybody wanted to have an ego, you could. But you just seem to remove that. And maybe you answered already when you talk about your relationship with God. You talk about putting the kids first. But I can't help but say you still get down and do the work. You know, you know what is that about? Well, it's important for me to lead the way. You know, um, a lot of a lot of people like to talk, and I like to just put in the work. And then when I ask a young man to do something, you know, there's nothing I haven't done that I'm asking him to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so he he feels you know a little bit um, more motivated to do it because mm -hmm. he know coach is willing to do it also. So if I'm asking him to get up early and do something, I'm willing to get up early with him. Yeah. You know, if yeah. I'm asking him to travel on the road, you know, I'm not just sending him; I'm going with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I even lift with my guys. I think mm -hmm. that's important. Yep. You know, a lot of head coaches aren't getting in with him and lifting with him. Well, I think they're afraid of getting exposed or uh, losing some credibility. There you go. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know, for me, that's my blessing. Yeah. You know, I'm still in pretty good today, shape. Coach, my God, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't, we didn't get a chance to get much in today. We did some stuff here out on the field uh -huh. with some push-ups, you know, mm -hmm. and some mountain climbers and some mm -hmm. squats and things like that. Some body weight stuff we did outside. But, you know, it's a blessing to be able to work with the boys close hand-in-hand -hand with them, mm -hmm. but to show them how to do things versus just tell them. I'm not a right. guy who just tells them to do stuff. I'm right in there with them. And, right and, and most importantly, that, that builds more of a solid relationship amongst us yeah. that they see me working just as hard as them. Oh, they definitely do. Before we so. get out of here, two things. Um, talk, we're going to talk about Friday the 27th. But uh, just say what the Big Red family and what that relationship is like and what that means. I think a lot of people may not really know. And me being, a, you know, coming from Detroit, and once I saw what was happening here and that love and that Big Red love, and not taking anything away from any of the other schools, but talk about what you would want to share to the Big Red family. Then let's talk about what Friday the 27th seventh is going to be like well in my big red family oh man it that runs deep mm -hmm. um you know i'm right from this neighborhood mm -hmm. um prior to coming here i watched so many of um, our big red brothers who donned this field and played and i was all, i always wanted to be a big red mm -hmm. i didn't realize how close a knit we were until i actually came here when i was a senior um all me and my boys our thing was together we can mm -hmm. and i just remember going through that process as a young man here and how much it grew me up it made me closer to my friends mm -hmm. um we built upon that it made us a more successful team mm -hmm. you know um you just don't get that as much no more because you know you got school of choice you got kids coming yeah, from all over sure, sure. so i spend most of my time trying to build that big red brand that quality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a family that I know we truly were when I played mm -hmm. here and it's and it's important to me now and to this day to bring that forward mm -hmm. with these young men and, and and that's what's special about this group that I have this year I can feel that that love that we have amongst mm -hmm. each other I can feel that bond starting to develop mm -hmm. um, you know we're not we're not being selfish no more we're playing for each other we're mm -hmm. playing with each other oh, wow. and most importantly like a true family we got each other's back you know I, I get my young guys call me late at night you know when they have just simple issues on the mm -hmm. table whether that's with their mom their dad and there's nothing more greater for me than to know that they can you know they feel comfortable making that call, that call coach and you know and, and just expressing themselves to yeah. me and not being afraid to because a lot of times that's what happens with us men we not you know we don't want to express our mm -hmm. you know concern we don't want to talk mm -hmm. with each other about what's going on we hold it in and then we blow up on each other mm -hmm. and then that's when family breaks apart mm -hmm. but we found a way as, as true family to channel our energies in the right direction mm -hmm. not to be emotional but to be be logical and just you know family is about being there for each other right. and that's it. what and that's one thing that you know I, me and bogan always had together you've mm -hmm. seen that when you were here with yep. us at sbs and we brought you 
we in, just mm-hmm. like family, yeah, family to us now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming so, home. Yeah. <laughs> home. I'm so that's home. what it's about, man. It's just it's truly about family. It's just about being there for each other, mm-hmm. supporting each other, and then you know when things get really tough and you hit some adversity, mm-hmm. how deep you dig in yeah. for your family. Yeah, you know. I talked to head coach uh, Everett Jaleel Canty. He gave you nothing but praise. I talked to him another day. You get the last word before we get out on the field. What now, you come on, say man. About you know, you know what? Hey, hey, we ready for Friday? You know, I would. Jaleel's an excellent young man. He's yeah, doing yeah. a fine job with that program yes, over yeah. there. You know, I got to give him kudos because he caught me on that first one. We played against each other when I was supposed to christen him, Ooh. you know, bringing him into the league. Jaleel, what you doing right now? Are you watching set, this? What you doing when you watching this? Set the tone <laughs> on him and welcome him to the league, but uh-huh. they end up uh, they end up getting us. So it's a little payback and time. He, he might be feeling a little bit too good Yeah, right he's now. feeling real good about it. I already know he is. He's, uh, he's feeling real good about it. So it's time that we let him know what the Big Red Nation is all about. Friday the 27th. Yep. Is no disrespect to nobody, but it's time to play. It's time to play. Coach, yes, you're doing sir. an excellent job. I appreciate you. You're Thank you, sir. We do. Always. I appreciate you, man. Thanks this for having me. With SPS, Coach Janelle Davis at Sexton High School. It'll be a big game Friday the 27th, but it's going to be a great thing all season long.